Welcome to Nepsi Tech Talk 39, modeling AMSC's DVARS.com and Siemens PSSE transmission planning and analysis software. For those who don't know, PSSE is one of the leading power transmission simulation analysis tools in the world. You can use it for power flow analysis, short circuit, contingency analysis, optimal power flow, voltage stability, transmission stability. I think I web off, uh, read off their website today. They're, um, they're utilized in over 170 countries around the world. So a very popular software package. Being able to correctly model AMSC's DVARS stat time allows for the evaluation of its performance and improving the steady state and dynamic stability of your power system. So it's very important to be able to model that, uh, that uh, stat com in your system. Before we get started, don't forget what AMSC and NEPSI does. Through the WinTech Solutions, AMSC provides wind turbine electronic controls and systems. Through its grid tech solutions, AMSC provides the engineering, planning services, and advanced grid systems that optimize network reliability, efficiency, and performance. And then manufactured products include HTS, high temperature superconducting cable solutions, DVAR, VBO Statcom, which is just which is a discussion today, and passive reactive power solutions that NEPSI manufactures, metal close cap banks and harmonic filter banks. Don't forget PDH contact hour certificates are available from NEPSI. Contact myself or Matt uh, to get a certificate after this tech talk. We will give you a number at the end of this tech talk. Questions, uh, we're gonna take questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, put those questions in the chat box and we'll be happy to answer all those questions at the end of the tech talk. Uh, today we are pleased to welcome Bill Domez from um, AMSC. He's the Manager of Transmission and Distribution Planning at AMSC. Hello Bill, how are you doing? Good Paul, how are you? Good. Well, so today we're going to be uh, talking about <clears throat> um, modeling PSSC, modeling uh, AMSC's DVARS.com in PSSC, so it's a very interesting subject. Right. Um, you want to just introduce maybe what you do at AMSC and then get, we can get on with your presentation? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm the manager of the, uh, our network planning team here at AMSC. Uh, my background is in uh, transmission planning. I started out as a transmission planner working for a utility. After that, I, I joined a, a system operator here in New England, uh, worked work as a system uh, operations engineer. And uh, I've been with AMSC almost five years now. Um, and we, so in, in this de department, network planning or transmission and distribution planning, uh, we do studies mostly for um, STATCOM applications, uh, using STATCOMs to allow uh, renewable energy integration, making sure the wind farms, solar farms are grid code compliant. Uh, we do power quality applications. Uh, industrial applications where if there's you know any voltage flicker problems or other uh, power quality issues we use statcoms to mitigate them um, and uh, yeah so it's a wide uh, range of uh, studies we perform and try to use statcoms to cost effectively solve uh, all sorts of reactive power and uh, voltage problems all right, so you basically do studies to uh, support the products that are offered by both NEPSI and AMSC, right? Absolutely, yes. And uh, pre-sale, post-sale, you know, in we can start anywhere from si a sizing study to help customers solve a problem, uh, find the right equipment, right, you know, Statcom and uh, uh, NEPSI solutions, uh, maybe like the mix there, whatever the mix cost-effective hybrid system there is. And then uh, once the project materializes, it's installed, we also help with uh, post-sale support of providing models, whether they are PSSC or PSCAT, uh, which is the electromagnetic transient software. Uh, Dixieland Power Factory is another software that we utilize. So we use a wide uh, range of software. Um, and I think the key is, also, of course, the, with these models, uh, people who use them are familiar with them is that once you install equipment, there's a lot of field events or field testing, field validation uh, that is required sometimes, right? And so the models need to be validated against uh, actual equipment in the field. So we help uh, with those kind of efforts as well. 
So today's topic is PSSE. I think in the future we'll be doing maybe one in PSCAD or Dixieland or some other uh, program packages. I think that's the plan that we have for the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can we can do something similar for other other software we use. Okay. But the concepts are basically the same. So we're going to demonstrate in PSSC. Uh, of course, this is a transient stability positive sequence domain simulation. I think in PSCAD, what would be interesting to do would be maybe uh, it's a three-phase electromagnetic transient simulation. So you can see uh, positive sequence, negative sequence, uh, mitigation and correction. So uh, it, it's the scope in PSCAD would be uh, uh, would be, I guess, uh, more uh, detailed than what we were doing PSSC here. Okay. All right. Well, we might as well get on with the presentation, and and uh, I think you're going to be doing some simulations too, live simulations work also, right? Yes. So we're going to bring up PS PSSC um, and run some scripts and get, produce some plots and do that uh, do that live. Okay. Great. Looking forward to it. Okay, um, so this is the Nipsey Tech Talk session 39. Uh, I just took a note here, um, going back, you know, before we just uh, we were talking with Paul. I think uh, this is going to be the fourth Tech Talk, Nipsey Tech Talk on Statcoms. We did one, I think, on general Statcom uh, information there. So that was Tech Talk 16. For background, if you want to go back to that one, there was Tech Talk 20, session 26. That's actually a good precursor to this one because that's the first Tech Talk we introduced the hybrid systems. And when we say hybrid, we talk about Statcom plus uh, shunts, uh, capacitors, passive systems. And then uh, Tech Talk 29 was on, a, on our a smaller Statcom solution. We have this uh, distribution Statcom, DVAR, VBO. Uh, so that was 29. And then now we're at 39. So um, I would recommend checking those out if you're interested. OK, so this is going to be a few slides here. Are I'm repeating from session 26, Tech Talk 26. But just quickly to go over what a Statcom is, it's a power electronic device made out uh, comprised of power inverters. Its purpose is really to inject reactive current into a power system for controlling voltage or power factor. Um, sign convention typically positive bars is capacitive, negative bars is inductive. Although I think I do have a slide later on where I'm going to change the convention on you. Um, but I'll, I'll call it out. Um, the Statcom provides both inductive bars and capacitive uh, current, I guess, both uh, inductive and capacitive current there. The inverter system here, just to show you uh, just a general concept, we connect to the system with a step-up transformer. Uh, the terminals of the Statcom is at 480 volts, and then we step it up to uh, medium voltage, typically anywhere from 12 kV to 35 kV. Uh, and then from there on, there could be another transformation up to the transmission system. Um, on the low side of the step-up transformer, we have our uh, IGBTs and then a DC capacitor, a DC source. So the idea is to take that DC capacitor and rectify it to generate an AC waveform using these inverters. Um, So then what does that look like? You can already see it in the picture. So one of these boxes uh, is, is, is our modular 4 megabar, uh, what we call PMEs, power module enclosures. Inside this box, you have four MVA or four megabar worth of inverters. And these boxes can be half populated to get you a two, two megabar uh, unit. And uh, you can put as many of these as you want to kind of scale it up and down. Uh, one unique thing about these inverters that we utilize is that they have uh, up to three times its current, uh, current rating as overload. 
So a four megabar module can produce 12 megabars at one per unit. Um, I, I think it's probably better just to talk about current instead of megabars because it's really three per unit current. So if the voltage is one per unit, it is 12 megabars. But if the voltage is higher or lower, the megabars are going to change because at the end, this is a constant current device, right? So uh, it's not a, unlike a capacitor, which is a constant impedance device, um, stat comes a constant current device. These uh, are systems. This, uh, uh, now, this is the power module enclosure, and it, it'll have a master control enclosure, which sits inside a control room. Um, that is the kind of like the brains of the overall uh, system. Um, and then together, we call that a DVAR statcom system. And in addition to the inverters, we can add NEPSI's metal enclosed reactive compensation solutions to form a hybrid system. Uh, statcom will be kind of the first responder, and then we'll utilize the NEPSI's equipment um, to kind of increase its, its, uh, its range. Um, and then as part of the NEPSI solution, these uh, passive solutions could, could include shunt capacitor banks, harmonic filter banks, or a combination of capacitors and reactors. Uh, most of our applications are on, in wind farms and solar farms. In those situations, in addition to the um, shunt resources, we can control uh, the turbines or the PPC power plant controller or, or power part controller, I think PPC stands for. Uh, so DVAR Statcom can communicate with the, uh, with the wind farm uh, and dispatch the reactive power of the turbines as, as needed. This is a uh, uh, utility application in the US just to kind of give you an idea about the footprint. Uh, here you can see that uh, PMEs, we have uh, an 8 MBA three winding transformer in the middle. And on each side of the 8 MBA transformer, we have four MBA STATCOM units. There are total total of nine units here. So nine times four, 36 megabar capability. This system uh, goes from 13.8 to 69 kV. Um, and then this is a rough uh, footprint of the 8 MBA transform in the middle, and then two 4 megabar uh, STATCOM units on each side. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, the dimensions are here um, for reference, if, if you're interested. This is uh, another example. Um, here you can see the hybrid solution where there are some shunts, reactors, and capacitors. Here's a, here's the, here are the two PMEs, 8 megabar module. Um, and then here on the left, there's actually a, a synchronous, synchronous condenser and, and the wind farm. So this is a, uh, a total hybrid system that utilizes uh, all sorts of equipment. So just a, a quick word on the overload capability. Um, one of the key advantages of our statcoms is the this three per unit for two seconds overload. Uh, and this diagram kind of shows that on the y-axis we have the uh, current rating, three per unit, up to three per unit. And then uh, on the x-axis we have time. So you can see at two seconds we go down. Uh, so what happens is if there's a voltage sag in the system, for example, that requires full three per unit uh, Statcom output, it can do so for two seconds. And at, at two second mark, it'll ramp down to one per unit, which is the continuous rating. It can keep going on at one per unit continuously. Now, if what if you don't need full three per unit? Um, maybe you need 2.5 per unit. Uh, and these are you know, all customizable options here. Um, so of course, you can run the overload longer uh, it's a thermal constraint, so if you don't need the full three per unit, um, we would just go, uh, we can go, we can do that for a longer period. And usually uh, when the stack on fully exhausts this overload, it'll take a few minutes 
to recoup it. So it'll stay at one per unit for a few minutes, uh, could be like up to five minutes, and then uh, it can uh, tap into overload again. Um, this provides a major, I guess, uh, cost advantage here because, you know, a lot of times during faults or during certain system conditions, uh, you need this additional reactive power, but you don't need it continuously, right? So uh, we can achieve that with smaller footprint. I guess that's the idea. And if you do truly need more reactive power for longer duration, then there are better approaches, right? We That's where we incorporate NEPSI's equipment. Um, and really the idea is to use the right tool for the right job. So what's the problem we're trying to solve, right? Is it a steady state problem, is it a dynamic problem, or a combination of both? So here's an example of what, uh, like a one-line diagram of a joint system with NEPSI looks like. You have the high voltage bus here. This is a wind farm. You have a power transformer stepping down to the collector system here. And then we got the wind park controller, and then the turbines here, and AMSC's master controller enclosure here, which will which can control the uh, wind park controller as well as the statcom units, the PMEs, and the uh, shunt devices here. And then we do get CT and PT uh, measurements from the system, which are then used as uh, control signals. This is a very typical solution for the uh, renewable energy applications we use. Uh, typically, the Stockcom's master controller can control up to 12 stages of shunt connected devices. Um, fully integrated metal enclosed solutions uh, that contain all switching and all protection and all control, right? So I think that's a pretty clean way to do this and uh, cost effective way of doing it. Um, when, so there's this gray area as to what, you know, um, dynamic capability, definition of dynamic capability. So, you know, when you switch in a capacitor, um, you switch it out and then let's say you want to switch it back in. So how quickly can you utilize capacitors back and forth or repeated uh, applications, right? So that's the, this is where the fastest charge systems come into play um, for the reenergization of capacitor banks using these fastest charge systems that can be done in five to 10 seconds. Uh, otherwise, you know, typically it, it can take a few minutes if you utilize a capacitor uh, for the next time you can utilize it. Uh, Without the fastest charge system, it can be a few minutes. Uh, and here, there's a note here, and we can talk about this a little bit more as I get to the simulations. Uh, we have this concept of soft switching, which I'm going to describe later. Uh, but this kind of puts a limit on how big sh the shunts can be. Uh, and the idea is, you know, if I go back to this previous slide, you see here there's an 8 megabar statcom, and if, you know, 5 megabar caps and a 5 megabar harmonic filter. Now, if you go at extremes, for example, can you put, you know, it's an eight megabar stack comp, can you put a, let's say 20 megabar capacitor and ask the stack comp to dispatch that? Well, in theory you can, but we kind of lose our soft switching capability if you do that. Um, and and I'll, and I'll describe again what that is. So in the general rule of thumb, we don't like to have shunts um, greater than the stack comp. I guess, up to 1.25 times of times the statcom size is uh, pretty doable, but beyond that, uh, we would either add a stage or just uh, upsize the statcom. And here's uh, again just another uh, similar view showing the with the Nepsi solution. This kind of this slide shows the uh, scope here, so yellow highlighted area is would be NEPSI's scope and then uh, in the name SC scope is going to be uh, the master control enclosure and the statcom unit itself. Uh, very typical application. 
So before we get into the PSSC simulations, just a few words on controls. Um, regulation, control modes, I guess we call it slow. It's really not slow, it's actually, uh, just because it's the regulation range, we call it the slow control modes. This is within the normal voltage range. It can be based on voltage droop, so kind of measuring the voltage at the point of connection, for example, and then trying to control that. Uh, we have an optional negative sequence uh, control as well. Um, and then power factor, or just reactive power, like measuring the flow and uh, fixing the flow to a predetermined value. So that's another control option there. In parallel to regulation control mode, we have this transient fast control mode. This is reserved, reserved for transient events. The transient mode kicks in automatically when the voltage deviates from the normal range. So if you define your normal range, let's say plus minus 5% or plus minus 10%, for example, uh, when the voltage goes outside that, the stat count jumps into another type of control there's a seamless transition in these, in these controls. Um, again, that control can be voltage droop based, reactive current based, or negative sequence uh, control can be added as well. And lastly, the external control interfaces. Um, we can control the uh, P PPC, uh, or basically other reactive power resources at the site. Um, and as well as the switch shots that uh, we've been talking about. So those are all incorporated into the uh, StatCam controls in our models. This, this is the most typical uh, control mode. So I just want to spend a few minutes here just to kind of explain this. And then this is the one we're going to use in the uh, simulations coming up. So you can see here blue lines and the red lines. Um, blue lines, this is where the, uh, the, this is the regulation control, voltage droop. Um, the y-axis is voltage and x-axis is the megabar, statcom megabar output. This is actually statcom plus the shunt, so this is the total output. In this example, we have a 12 megabar statcom, DVAR statcom, two by 12 megabar caps, NIPSI caps and 2 by 12 megawatt reactors there. So you can see this blue line extends all the way to 36 megabars on each direction uh, because it, this total, if you sum up all the resources, you got 30 symmetric system here, 36 megabar. Um, and I guess the convention here, um, I guess I'm contradicting my earlier slide, on the left side is capacitive side, even though it's, I guess, I'm using negative. Uh, values for the capacitive side. And then on the right side is the inductive side here. So the right side kicks in for high voltage, but the left side kicks in for low voltage. And all these, uh, on the right, you kind of see uh, annotated version of the uh, diagram on the left. All these values are parameters and configurable. So the shape of this diagram is highly customizable depending on the application needs. Uh, you know, we, we typically have a dead band, so those would be the buck boost uh, on delta. Those would be the parameters, and I'll show you what those parameters are in, in a second. But that kind of puts a dead band, these dashed lines. So if the voltage is inside these dashed lines, the stat gun will sit there in idle, waiting for the voltage to go outside the dead band. And once it's outside the dead band, it Statcom's objective is just voltage droop control, right? It is just going to try to uh, stay on the droop curve. So the total output of the devices would need to be uh, such that uh, the uh, operating point travels up and down on this um, blue line here. And if the voltage deviates for extreme events here, you see this is, I think, 92% voltage and 108% voltage. If the voltage goes outside the red red dashed lines, then the blue, then the red curves take over, and this is where we the stack on will utilize its overload. And if the voltage is, for example, is below 85%, then the stack is going to go full out, full 
3x current output. So I think this is a, probably a, a very key idea. People familiar with generators, exciters, I think this is a pretty easy concept. But for someone new, I think voltage droop is a critical concept. And we kind of uh, make it uh, adding this additional, so having two sets of droop controls, the transient and regulation together, I think this is kind of like a unique uh, control feature that allows quite a bit of customization and uh, application specific uh, parameters. So now we should look at the droop, but then how about how do we utilize shunts? Um, so this diagram is, a, is gives you an idea of uh, how the statcom utilizes capacitors. On the left side is the statcom reactive current, that's the y-axis, and the x-axis is time. So anytime the DVAR output, the statcom output, is in the shaded gray area, it'll make a decision to add a capacitor or remove a reactor, uh, or vice versa. So in our uh, PSSC model, these are all parameters, and, and I'll show you those, um, and they're all customizable. So they're you can see here there are four points, and each point has uh, a pair of parameters. So this is, uh, you can customize this, uh, these timers here. Um, one idea is, of course, right away when you look at this diagram, um, if you reduce T3 and T1, meaning if you keep moving this point to the left closer to the uh, y-axis, then of course, the capacitors and reactors will switch in and out quicker, right? So this is going to reduce. Uh, so if you imagine that if the bar is at full output, for example, uh, it's going to have to wait T3 seconds before a capacitor can switch in. But if you keep moving T3 to the left, uh, you can switch it pretty, pretty fast. Uh, here on the right, I show uh, one second for T1 and one second for T3. So this means that if the stack comes at full output, and you can see I3 and I1, which is negative one and one per unit DVAR current. So if the DVAR is at full one per unit current, it's gonna wait one second to dispatch a capacitor. If you say, okay, what one second is too long, I, I actually want my capacitors to come in quicker, you can reduce T3 um, and you can go all the way down to we are we we recommend not uh, values maybe down to 100 milliseconds, so you can switch capacitors pretty fast. And then the bottom right gives you a, like a cheat sheet almost uh, for a given statcom size, um, how big of a shunt we would like to incorporate. Um, so the recommend values are going to be 1.25s times the statcom rating. Uh, there's this absolute max. I guess we can, if needed, go all the way up to 1.625 per unit. Um, so for a 20 megabar statcom, we can dispatch to 2.5 megabar. But again, instead of doing this, what I would recommend is, if you truly need 30 megabars, I would, if possible, break it up into two stages, make it six, two 16 megabar stages. And then that way, 20 megabar statcom can easily control Control that, control those. So let's get into the uh, PCC example. So in this example, uh, I already showed you the droop profile a few slides back, but this is the same system 12 megabar stat comp here on the left. Um, this is going to have uh, three, four megabar stat comps. I'm just aggregating into a single blue box here. And we would typically have uh, three 4 MVA transformers, or we can have an 8 MVA and a 4 MVA transformer. But I mean, again, I'm aggregating, aggregating that to a single uh, 12 MVA transformer. In PSSC, this is usually how we aggregate things. And then capacitors and reactors, we have 2 by 12 and uh, Two, two by 12 megabar caps and two by uh, negative 12 megabar 
reactors. Oh, oh sorry, typo. This should, this should have said 12 here. Um, yeah, so this is the system we're going to simulate. We will, the primary regulation bus is going to be this bus. Uh, pink numbers are here, are the PSC bus numbers. So bus number 100 is going to be the 115 kV bus. Uh, I guess this is, I'm calling it purple. And then uh, 101 is the transient medication bus. We have the option, uh, if you remember the Drew profile, we have the blue lines and the red lines. Um, so the blue Drew profile will regulate the bus 100 here. That's going to be our regulation Drew. And then for transient, we, I guess, are choosing in this example to regulate the 34 kV bus low side of the power transformer. So the fast transient profile will be applied on the 101, bus number 101. Uh, it doesn't have to be. We can have both the slow and the fast uh, controls to be on the same bus. So we can move them all to the 115 kV bus or the 35 kV bus. It is uh, basically up to the user and the application, what, 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 whatever is needed in the application. Um, let's take a quick look at the VQ capability. Um, before I jump into the uh, PSCC. So for that system that we have, if you just look at the StatCom by itself, and this is, you know, this slide and the next slide I'm going to show you, it's kind of supposed to give you the uh, idea. Um, I'm trying to convey the benefits of the uh, extending the StatCom's capability with the Nepsi solutions. So if you look here, just StatCom by itself, you buy the system, you get uh, here about 13 megabars. Um, it's 13 megabars because the voltage is greater than one per unit. Again, it's a constant current device, right? So a 12 megabar unit can produce 13 megabars if the voltage is greater than one per unit. And then uh, 31 megabars using the overload. Um, you might say, okay, it's not 36 because I kept, I kept saying it's three times 12, right? 3x overload. Well. It's 31 because, again, the voltage is not one per unit. Uh, it's a V times I. Uh, as voltage goes down, the megabars linearly go down as well. Um, and then on the right side is the inductive side. Uh, inductive side, there seems to be more capability. Um, it's just because of the, the, this is the reason why the right hand left side look different is voltage compliance. There is a certain amount of uh, high voltage on the 480 terminals of the StatCom uh, that it can handle. That's why uh, it doesn't uh, look symmetric also as well as you know the voltage is higher on the right side uh, because of that. So that's why you don't see this tapering off that you see on the left. You don't see that on the right side. So now, exact same figure. Now let's add those two by twelve megawatt caps and two by twelve megawatt reactors. Let's see what it looks like. So, I use the same uh, axes. So I'm not changing. So if I toggle back and forth, you will see that it's minus sixty to plus eighty here. So you see how we are able to extend. The capability quite a bit. So from 13 megawatts, now we're up to 40 megawatts on the uh, regulation range. And that's because of the capacitors, these 2 by 12 megawatt capacitors. Um, and then overload, we can go up to 49 megawatts. So this is a, uh, a quite cost effective way of expanding the system's total capability. Um, and that's why this is a very uh, popular uh, way of uh, uh, utilizing reactive resources in many applications. So PSSC models, we typically provide a template package, a PSSC model package uh, to our customers when uh, they would like to use our stack comps. Uh, in this package, there's going to be a parameter setup spreadsheet, um, a user manual, a power flow test case, just like a very simple case 
uh, to kind of get the user started. A dynamic data file, this is where the parameters, dynamic parameters are stored. Uh, a Python, an optional Python script uh, to run a transient stability simulation, a very simple simulation. And then there are some other optional files, such as the uh, slider diagram, which is the one line diagram in PSSC, and uh, a, a script to make power flow adjustments. So let me uh, switch to, to the folder and show you these files. So let me see what's my next slide here. Yeah, so we're going to set up the parameters using the spreadsheet. And then we're going to modify the power flow case, run the script, and generate some plots. So let's just uh, go to the folder. So this is this is typically what would be included in a PCC template package. Um, here's a DYR file. Um, parameters set up spreadsheet. PCC uh, uh, DVAR user manual. Um, power flow adjustment script. Power flow case and the uh, Python script. So let's take a look at the parameter sheet first. So up top here, typically we start with um, total uh, boost regulation droop and buck regulation droop. So these this is these are the desired uh, uh, regulation droop values and we also incorporate the total shunts available uh, capacitive inductive 24 megabar here i guess we're using 2 by 12 megabar caps and 2 by 12 megabar reactors and you can see it here on this diagram so now once you enter these numbers this means that the user wants 0 0.015 per unit droop or 1.5 percent droop right both on the boost and the buck side. Um, and what that, that does is automatically it'll draw the voltage control profile here. And if you look at this, these lines, the, the slope of these lines, it would be 1.5% or 0 0.015 per unit. Um, but the actual stat comes droop will automatically get calculated here. Uh, this is going to come out to be 0.5%, because if you think about it, we have 1.5% on total of 36 megabar resources, right? We got 12 megabar statcom plus 24 megabar caps on one side. So if you're doing 1.5% on 36 MBA, it amounts to a third of that, 0.5% uh, on 12 MBA, so which is the statcom base rating. So this is basically for internal controls. Statcom needs to convert the total droop into its own base. Uh, for those of you familiar with PSSC, transient stability, there are some icons and cons. So icons are the integer constants. Uh, you would need to specify the control mode. Bus numbers 100, 101, 100, those are the uh, bus numbers here. Um, oh, actually, uh, I think this should be 101. So we have the option to do either, as I was describing before, the transient voltage control can be either on the primary bus or on the transient bus. So we have the option to change that there. We specify some other uh, parameters here, but I think for this exercise, let's just look at the, uh, we define the shunts. So at bus 101, we have a capacitor, another capacitor, a reactor, and a reactor. Um, and I'll show you in PCC a one-line diagram in a second. So some other values here is uh, voltage reference. This would, you can see on the right, as I change this value, it'll move the blue lines up and down, shift everything up and down. Uh, that would kind of change the voltage reference of the statcom. And then all these values are customizable. So uh, let's say regulation boost turn on. What if I want to use a 0 0.02 per unit? So turn on. So you see here the dashed line 
uh, move down as I change this number. Uh, I can go back to 0 0.01. So everything here is quite customizable. Um, target value is where the uh, droop intersects the y-axis. And then KPKI, those are the uh, PI loop parameters or PI control parameters, rating of the statcom. Then the transient parameters are here. Those define the red lines. And transient has profile has its own PI control. Maximum overload of three per unit, maximum overload duration of two seconds. Um, so yeah, so there's some other settings here too. Now the interesting one is the shunt. So here we're gonna use half a second. Uh, so you see here on the left, on the right, you see the uh, this point is 0.5 seconds and one per unit. So that's when the, uh, uh, the it draws this profile to for shunt switching, right? So if the operating point is to the north of the red line, then we dispatch capacitors or remove reactors, and vice versa. If it's to the south of the blue line, we uh, switch out caps or add reactors and you can draw this using these parameters here. And here I'm using one second or half a second and two seconds. So here's the half second mark and then here's the two second mark. So if the stack I'm output is 0.55 per unit for two seconds, then we would dispatch a capacitor. And here are the capacitor and reactor ratings. Um, 120 millisecond close delay, 80 millisecond shunt switch open delay. And this example, we're using 300 second, uh, which is I think five minutes shunt discharge time. So this is for re-switching back the capacitors. So this is the time uh, in between uh, consecutive shunt operation. If you use a, a fast discharge solutions, then uh, this can be reduced to you know, five to, to, you know, like less than maybe 10 seconds. And the neat thing about this spreadsheet, at the very end of it, it automatically, using these parameters, it automatically generates this, um, uh, these, these parameters that goes into the uh, DYR file, which is the dynamic data file. So if I open that file, which is needed for PSSC transient stability simulation. Um, so you see here that um, we have a generator model. This is just for the Slack bus model. And then here's a DVAR model. So all these parameters that are shown in the spreadsheet are turned into this text format. And the spreadsheet, you know, instead of trying to figure out what which number you change here, I find it, you know easier just to come in here, make a change, let's say you're changing the size of your capacitor, you just put that number here automatically, it gets uh, updated there. And then uh, you can just copy paste this whole thing into the DYR file. Okay, so let's uh, fire up PSSC. I think I'm going a bit slower than I expected. So try to pick up speed here a little bit. No problem, Bill. You can uh, keep going. I think it's great. Um, okay. I, I would say you're better off to over-explain than under-explain in this situation. Right. Good deal. Okay, so this is PSSC. Um, so in this package, we have a uh, .sav file, which is the PowerFlow file. When you bring that up, It'll have the all the uh, system information. Here are the bus numbers, bus names, and the machine information, and uh, branches, transformers, all that stuff is in here. If I open up a slider, this is usually a better way to kind of, I find it to be to, to navigate or make changes to the uh, system. So this is the system we are going to simulate. 
Starting from the left, this is the Slack bus or the infinite bus. This is the source system source here. At this bus, we have infinite strength or full power. Uh, and from here, typically we uh, go down to a lower um, full power. So in this example, we're going to simulate a 2000 MVA transmission system at this bus, an X over R ratio of 10. And the way we do that is we typically put uh, on this transmission line here, we just put some R and X values. Uh, X over R of 10, I think here is what I'm using. These are per unit uh, resistance and uh, reactance values. This will basically uh, reduce the power to 2000 MVA on this 115 kV bus. And then we have another branch here. So, so this is a zero impedance branch. It doesn't have any uh, impedance really. Uh, this is just to monitor the P and Q flow coming out of the plant. So you can kind of consider this maybe as a wind farm or, or just a utility application, just a standalone statcom here. But this is the 115 kV point of connection. Uh, and we, we can measure the real power on this branch to see what the statcom is doing. Here's a step-up transformer. We're using a 100 MVA, 6% impedance transformer here. It could be whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't have to be 100 MVA, obviously. It can be, uh, it, it can actually be a 36 MVA here because we have 36 MVA worth of resources. Um, and then here's the Statcom. We're using the FACT model within uh, FACT device within uh, PSSC and the step up transformer. So it's a 12 megawatt stack gun. We use 12 MVA transformer with a 5.5% impedance is typically what we use. And here are our shunts, capacitors, 12 megawatt each, and then uh, reactors, negative 12 megawatt. Um, so this is power flow, right? So, I mean, we can do things here, right? We can, I can switch in this uh, capacitor in service. Um, I can run power flow. You can see the 12 megawatt uh, going out to the system, and then you can see this uh, this number, the numbers. Uh, over the line are the megawatts, and the numbers below the line are the megawatts. Um, you can see the 12 megawatt coming out to the system. Uh, but we're going to do a dynamic simulation, so we're not going to do a power flow simulation here. So for the dynamic simulation, we need to bring in the DYR file. Um, so there are actually quite a few things, uh, quite a few steps. If you're familiar with PSSC, I'm not going to get into super, like this is uh, really, I'm trying to focus on the Statcom. So I'm hoping that you have some PSSC knowledge. But there are so many steps that you have to take before you can run a uh, transient simulation in PSSC. So the best way we find to do that is through the uh, some sort of an automation. So here, I'm just going to show you one of the scripts, and we, you know we can share these scripts with the, we share this kind of um, those kind of, these kind of scripts with the users. Um, basically, this is gonna, we're going to simulate a step change, uh, voltage set point change. So we're going to step up. So I guess the idea is. So imagine a system operator or a, a wind farm operator is trying to. Uh, or utility operator is trying to utilize, uh, increase the voltage in the system, for example, uh, through SCADA or through other uh, VPN connection, uh, you can change the statcom set points, right? So you can come in here and let's say we're at one per unit, we can step it up to 1.03 per unit, for example. So when you do that, you can shift the entire profile up which will require DVAR to dispatch its resources. And, um, and I'm going to show you what this means, but the idea is that operating point has to be on this blue line 
Um, so as you step the voltage up or the voltage reference up, Stacom will respond. Another way to do this is instead of a set point change, you can actually apply a disturbance in the system. It can be a fault or something, right? And then you can see how uh, Stacom responds to a fault or another disturbance in the system. But in this example, just to keep it simple, we're just going to do a voltage reference or a voltage set point change. So for that, here's the script, and I can, you know, um, if you're interested to receive this package, this PSSC test case, please uh, maybe shoot an email to Paul, and uh, we can deliver this package to you so that you can uh, run simulations on your end. Um, I'm not going to explain everything here one by one, but the idea here, all these commands here, these are PSSC commands. The first one adds, so opens up the case uh, in PSSC. The next one reads the dynamic data. This is the DYR file. And then the next one converts generators to Norton equivalents. Then the next few converts load, if you have any load in your system, into, again, uh, some Norton equivalents there. Uh, PCC orders the network, factorizes the matrices, and runs a um, uh, transient uh, switching solution here. Um, so this, these are all precursors, and almost these are kind of mandatory for every transient stability simulation. Um, then comes in the uh, uh, channels. So these are the things you want to monitor. So here we're going to monitor the flow, P and Q, real power, reactive power flow on the branch from 100 to 204. So it's basically branch 100. So this is the bus 100, and this is bus 204. So we want to monitor the real power and reactive power going right to left on this branch. So we added yet those channels here with this command. Then there are a bunch of internal channels. So DVARs, controls, AVR mode, uh, DVAR total Q output. Uh, regulation voltage, 480 voltage, transient bus voltage, DVAR per unit current, voltage reference, and total shunts dispatched. This is a variable to track that. Um, and then that's it. So that's it's all the precursor stuff. And then here comes in the uh, simulation, uh, starting of the simulation here with this command. This is a run command here where you run up to one second. So this is the timer. We advance from zero second, which is where the simulation starts, up to one second. And then at one second mark, we can apply a voltage reference step. Uh, here we're going to step to 1.02, which is passed to the DVAR uh, itself, and then run to 10 seconds. So that's a very simple uh, simulation. Uh, don't worry too much about these. I think if you're a PCC user, you can look up all these commands in the PCC user manual. And maybe one before I hit run here in PCC, let me show you um, in PCC documentation. If you go to the API manual, this is the application program interface. You can find all these commands. Um, so, for example, if I just look up this in the manual search for that. So these are fact device model commands. So here is the command here. Um, use this API to change the value of a parameter, a, con, a constant of the fact device model. So we're going to change uh, the, the parameters. So the one we want to change, if you look here, we want to change con number one. So what is the first con we're going to change? So if you look at the parameter spreadsheet, the very first constant, the con, is voltage reference. So we're going to change the voltage reference to shift the droop profile so that uh, DVAR responds. And then likewise, you know, if you change this number, uh, you can modify other constants during the simulation other parameters. And uh, lastly, PSSC version 34.5 and above and newer versions, there's this vendor-specific library. Um, if you look at the vendor-specific library, we do have the AMSC's DVAR model 
CDVAR7 in there. Um, you can see these, these icons correspond to the same icons I was showing in the spreadsheet. And the next page, you'll see the uh, cons. Again, these are just parameters, right? And you can change them in the parameters of spreadsheet. And then uh, here are the VARs. And VARs are the channels that these are internal variables that uh, you can plot in PCC simulations. In the script, if you noticed, I'm adding those VARs here, the VAR channels. Uh, they correspond to the, uh, in this table, the, the VARs there. Uh, we want to monitor what the StatCom is doing. So we need to add these channels in the simulation. Yeah, and there's really no additional. So this is already, this model is already built into the PSC 34.5 and, uh, and newer versions. If you need to use our StatCom models in uh, versions before 34.5, earlier versions, then we would need to provide you a DLL. Uh, so here's, for example, is the PSC version 33.12. Point one version. Uh, so you would need to load this DLL before you start your simulation. But it's basically the same model. Uh, it's just that in earlier versions, the CDVAR7 was not in the PTI PCC library. OK, so let's just do the simulation. So um, now let's, let me show you first, I think, what we're shooting for here. We're going to do uh, two versions of this. So in the first one, we're going to do a 5% step change. So on the left axis, you got the voltage at the regulation bus, the primary bus. On the right axis, we have the real uh, reactive power measured at the point of connection. Starting at one per unit voltage, as we do a, a, apply a 5% step change, this will force the StatCom to dispatch all its resources. And you can see that uh, the, here, the first response is going to be the StatCom. It's going to wait about a second to dispatch a capacitor. It's going to wait another second to dispatch the capacitor. By the time, maybe, OK, uh, before three seconds, actually. Uh, I think we had the 0.5 second timer for the uh, shunts. So if I look here. Yeah, so we're using uh, 0.5 seconds for the shunts. So it waits about half a second here, dispatch another capacitor, half a second, dispatch another capacitor. And you can see within less than two seconds, I guess, we do go from zero megabar output to full 36 megabar continuous rating here. So this is the idea of, okay, how do you take a 12 megabar statcom, expand its range to 36 megabars yeah, using capacitors. And then the voltage uh, here uh, goes up to um, something, I guess, less than 1.02 per unit there. And if you look at uh, the what happens with the DVAR output, on the left, you got the DVAR current, per unit current. So one per unit would be 12 megabar worth of current. Um, so you see the StatCom responding going to full output. It stays at full output for half a second. And then this is the soft switching that I was uh, talking about earlier. Um, the DVAR backs off the exact same amount of the capacitor to open up room for the capacitor. And then it'll ramp up back up again if needed, if the voltage is not on the Druk um, curve. Um, and then do the same thing for the second capacitor. And then the green uh, curve is the total capacitors. On the right axis, you see we go from zero megabar to uh, 24 megabar there. So dispatching two capacitors in stages there. And this is the soft switching. Um, D-bar backing off to open up room for the capacitor. That's kind of what we call what we call soft switching. So let's go to our script. We want to do a 5% step. Um, so typically, you know, you can change your parameters. So here we're starting at, um, I'm going to put zero here. When you put zero, this actually automatically 
DVAR initializes automatically to the system voltage to be uh, at an idle zero megabar output in the beginning of the simulation. I mean, or you can just put like 1.0 or something like that, but zero is usually a good way to start here. And then uh, these are the parameters. So you can just come in here, copy the parameters. So you can copy all this uh, stuff here. Um, you can close this stuff so that it's easier to see. Okay, so this is our CD bar seven. Um, you can come in and uh, replace whatever old numbers you had in there, copy paste. Uh, should probably not use shortcuts so you can see what I'm doing here. So here you go, paste. Okay, so these are all the parameters, the 12 megabar caps and everything uh, is in there. You can save. So this first model, this is the generator model. So that will be the model for this Slack bus generator. And then we have the StatCom model. Um, and the script is ready here. So all we have to do is uh, change, we're gonna do 1.05 per unit. We're going to do basically a no disturbance or no change, run up to one second, change the voltage reference to 1.05, and run to 10 seconds. That's the idea. So the script is ready. Did I save it? It's save. OK. So now I'm going to run the script in PSSC. It's a Python script. Voltage step test. So you see here, uh, there are some log log messages in the progress window. Uh, one thing just for PCC, uh, you always want to make sure that things initialize properly. Uh, if the power flow case is not uh, solved properly or if you make changes, sometimes you might not get a uh, initial conditions right. So if you look at the uh, if, if I scroll up here, you would see these uh, initialization uh, messages. Uh, you typically want to check to see if there are any error messages. Uh, this is initial conditions check. OK, this is a good indicator that there's no initial condition problems. This is basically taking the power flow information and initializing the dynamic uh, dynamic models, all you know the uh, initial conditions for the differential equations of the uh, dynamic models. And simulation went through at uh, you know we changed the voltage reference to 1.05 at one second. You see that uh, uh, here's that change command that was applied. It corresponds to this change command to 1.05. You see that here coming in. And then uh, we dispatch shunts at 1.7 and 2.5 seconds. Those are when the shunts came in. Um, so here you see that the output is saved into this file. This is a binary file, so you'll have to open this inside PSSC. Um, VREF step two that out. So if I open that file, you can see it was uh, modified uh, here. And then um, here is the out file. When you open it, the channels will be available on the left. You can bring in the regulation voltage and the uh, reactive power at the point of connection. So you see we go from on the right 0 megabar to 36 megabar, and here is the voltage step. Um, so that's basically this 5% uh, step test. Uh, I'm running long, but I'll just do one quick, one more quick test, because I think this example doesn't uh, do a good job, I think, showing the soft switching. I think a better example would be uh, doing a smaller step to see how the capacitor 
let's say a single capacitor is dispatched. Um, so let's do a 2% step. Um, and for this one, uh, you'll see that for a 2% step in the voltage reference, we will be stepping to Um, 1.02. And you can kind of look at the Drupe profile to see um, once the simulation runs to see if everything checks out. So it's really a good way to validate it. So let's just uh, take a look at uh, this example before we run. Um, when we change the voltage step to 1.02 DVAR response, and it settles at about, I think 1.008 is this value here. And then the total reactive power is about 16 megabars. Um, and then uh, you can see uh, actually, I think. Uh, Oh, sorry. I think I, uh, this this is supposed to be. Uh, uh, let me show it in case you see. It's the same picture. I copied the wrong picture. But uh, let's just run it in case you see and look, see what it looks like. So you can fire up. Uh, you can have multiple instances of PCC running. So let's just fire up a clean one. And then while PCC is launching, I'm going to come here and change the voltage reference to 1.02. And I'm going to hit save here. OK, so here's the PCC instance. Uh, if you come in here, run the script. Oh, um, I need to change. So you see, you want to look for errors. Since I have another PSSC instance um, that's already using this out file, uh, it's having access write issue. So let me just close this instance. Go back to my script. Let's change this to change of out file name. Save. Start PCC. Run the script. <clears throat> this time we utilize only one capacitor. Let's open the out file to look at the channels. Um, let's look at the DVAR output and the capacitors here. So what's going on here is DVAR starts at zero megabar at one second. We apply that step change. DVAR ramps up to full one per unit. And right there when the capacitor comes in, which is the green line here, DVAR backs off to zero to open up room for that capacitor. And then it just uh, ramps up again to, because uh, it still hasn't settled on the droop curve, and then uh, settles around some value here. So uh, if you look at it here, the total we dispatch 12 megabar caps, and then 
I don't know, this is maybe 0.3 per unit current, so about four megabar. So roughly we got 16 megabars of resources dispatched. Um, we got about 16 megabar resources dispatched and the voltage is about 1.008. So what does that look like in our droop curve? Are we on the property on the operating, uh, operating is the operating point on the droop curve? So here I'm just plotting this uh, dot here, which is the operating point. I plugged in 1.008 for the voltage and 16 megabar. You can see that we settled on the droop curve. Um, so this kind of gives you an idea, like what if the voltage was, let's say, one per unit? Then uh, you would kind of expect full output from the statcom. So you see, I need to always be on the droop curve as long as the resources are not fully utilized or, you know, um, of course, if the voltage is less than one per unit, uh, we will be at the end of the droop curve and we'll be sitting at negative 36 megabar. Um, but as you travel uh, up and down on the droop curve, you can kind of get an idea of uh, how much output you expect from the DVAR. So this droop concept is, I think, pretty powerful. Um, just because we did 2% step change, it doesn't mean you're going to get 2% at the point of connection. It's going to be based on this droop. Uh, we have 1.5% droop, right? So that's kind of the uh, error allowed, uh, which then, of course, um, allows multiple uh, units or multiple devices to control transmission voltages. I think this is a common concept for um, transmission operations or even distribution. Um, when multiple devices control voltage on a given system. So I think that's all I wanted to show. Um, so in conclusion, um, if StatCom is required for your project, it's key to determine um, the total amount of megabars reactor power needed and see if a, a hybrid solution can be utilized uh, using the switch shunts harmonic filters, reactors, uh, to reduce the overall cost. Um, there are other benefits of these hybrid systems, like for example, if you use harmonic filters, you can prevent dampened uh, harmonic resonance. Uh, harmonic filtering is a, another benefit there. Um, and then if you would like to get the template, I guess, yeah, here's my email, you can email me, or here's Paul's email. Just shoot an email to one of us. Um, and uh, we can provide you this uh, this template. And uh, just if you're a PCC user, remember the model is already in the PCC library. So, uh, but the additional files, the setup files, and things like that, we can provide. All right, yeah. Bill. And uh, and that PDH contact hours is uh, the certificate number is one two three. I'm yes. glad you put that on your presentation also. So. Uh, email myself or Matt to uh, receive a PDH certificate. So that, that was a very, very good and thorough presentation. And I think that we'll be getting messages back from people in the future saying how you saved their life. Um, that's the kind of email. It's, it's a great, it was a great and thorough presentation, Bill. Um, and I've never seen PSSC used in this way. So it was also interesting to me. Um, so I was an employee of PTI back in the early 90s, so a long time ago. But uh, yeah. So we're going to go over to a question screen um, for the audience. Please uh, put your questions, if you could, now into the uh, chat box of YouTube. And uh, we're going to come back to Bill in just about uh, 30 seconds to a minute and uh, let uh, Bill field any uh, questions that you may have. So.
All right, guys. Um, so we just have one uh, question that came in from Timar, and it's um, it's directed at you, Bill. So you can answer the question. Is he's asking what is what is an EFD? Yeah, EFD stands for the Exciter Field Voltage. It's a, uh, in PCC for generator models. Um, you know, in our Statcom, there's no Exciter, but uh, you know, there's another version of this model where we actually use a generator model to represent the Statcom. In that case, that would be an EFT voltage there. But uh, yes, yeah, so it's not actually uh, relevant for our model here. Okay, good. Another question came in from Luis uh, Fernando Montoya. He says, thank you for the uh, presentation, Bill. And uh, what is a good typical ratio between DVAR and static median voltage switch capacitor banks ratio? Yeah. Hi, Luis. Uh, thanks for asking the question. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, so usually I would say a good rule of thumb is uh, one third the size of the Statcom. Oh, I'm sorry, the total compensation. So let's say, it is, as I showed in the example, if you need 36 megabars, we would go one third Statcom, two thirds shunts. Um, we can do more, obviously. Uh, and, and there are applications like that. But if you think about the concept of converting the droop to the Statcom space, uh, it can get challenging as you want to put more capacitors uh, in a 36 megabar system with 1.5% droop that amounts to half a percent droop on the uh, Statcom 12 MVA base. Uh, but yeah, so I would just say one third of the total compensation for the Statcom and then two thirds for capacitors. And you have that uh, criteria of stage size. The stage size is like 1.25 to 1.6, if I remember it right. Uh, right, exactly. So 1.25 is probably uh, uh, how large we want to go. So if it's a 12 megabar stack on, 1.25 times that uh, would be a good number. Uh, but again, I mean, these are not hard rules. We can customize the system. Okay. It's, it's, um, Mansoor asked a question. Uh, can you also provide the uh, control block, um, probably diagrams maybe, um, and transfer or disarms and transfer functions? I read it as it's written for Statcoms and other software such as ATP, SKM, ETAP. Yeah, so we usually require some sort of an NDA. Uh, to release a uh, non-disclosure agreement to release our control block diagrams. But for the PSSC model, actually, we're thinking about that. Um, in the PSSC vendor library, we would like to put a simplified PSSC block diagram. Um, so look for that in the maybe future releases. Uh, and if you have a specific application and um, trying to solve, feel free to reach out. and. Uh, we can work into like just one-on-one -on -one arrangement of providing that information. Mm, okay. Um, my store asked, uh, how can the Statcom operate for combined functions such as power factor, harmonic, and voltage control same time, as by changing the cap and inductance, the tuning frequency of the filter will change. Um, if I understand. To the question, I think, so the control mode, you only have one control mode at a given time. You can do voltage control or power factor control. You can switch back and forth. Operator can adjust that. Um, in, terms of, in terms of harmonics, uh, you know, we don't provide active harmonic filtering with our Statcom, but we utilize filters, you know, NEPSI filters to uh, deal with harmonic issues. Um, was, that, was, was there anything else I think, in that question? I think, I think you kind of hit it. So the Statcom's providing VARs. It's not doing anything to, with harmonic filtering. It doesn't produce harmonics, but yet it also does not uh, reduce voltage distortion. It doesn't consume um, harmonic current from the network. It's just providing reactive power or consuming reactive power. If you need filtering, that's a secondary function. That's a system requirement, and you're going to do that with a passive filter system, or you have to add active filters. Uh, but typically, systems of this size, we see passive filters as being something you would use. Yeah, 
Yeah, one thing maybe just to add on, the StatCab itself has filters inside, harmonic filters for higher order harmonics. The total harmonic distortion of our StatCab is less than 1% on the DVAR base current. Uh, so it's it's pretty uh, harmonic neutral equipment, um, and the internal filters it has cleans up the harmonic uh, signature. Okay, my source says he needs a Statcom model uh, in his software modeling. So my source, whose software package are you talking about? I guess would be the question for him. Maybe he, we can wait just a moment and see if he can come back with that. Um, but. Uh, if there's any questions, get them in real quick because we're about ready to end. It's 322. Next week, while we're waiting for those questions, we're going to be uh, doing um, a, a tech talk on the ABB Ultrafast Earthing Switch. We have three videos that we're going to bring on. One is how that system is operated in Nepsi's equipment, how it works. We're actually going to bring it out to our factory floor to do that. And then there's really two good demonstration videos that ABB has that we're going to show. And then lastly, we're going to have ABB on with us to discuss the, uh, to discuss the uh, ABB uh, Ultrafast Earthing Switch, which is an arc flash mitigation device uh, for those who do not know. Um, the PDH code for today was 123, uh, if, if you missed that. And um, so um, we, another thank you very much. Uh, Louis says thank you very much, Bill. Uh, is the voltage measurement reference point for the system at the POI, DVAR plus medium voltage caps, or at the DVAR terminals? Usually the POI point of connection is where the uh, control point is. It could be the medium voltage bus as well, but uh, we don't do, uh, the controls are not on the 480 stack up terminals. They're usually up further upstream. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay, I think that just about rounds off the questions. Bill, thank you for, for coming on, and we hope to have you guys back to do um, some simulations w using other software packages. So uh, for the yeah. audience, look for, we look forward to having him back to do those also, or maybe somebody else at AMSC if it's not you. Yeah, absolutely. That would be, that would be good. All right. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Thanks, everyone.